NASA is getting rid of their International Space Station and what's going to replace it is... What's going on one and all, it is Seedling Space here and this week we are doing a high level overview of the commercial space station offerings, the winners, the losers, and what it all means. So as I mentioned earlier, NASA is getting rid of their International Space Station within a few years. And what's going to replace it is their new program called the Commercial LEO Destinations Program. Now you might be thinking, well, why are they getting rid of the International Space Station? Hasn't it been around for a while? And the answer is, yes, it has been. According to a CNBC article, the ISS costs about $4 billion per year to continue maintenance and operations. Now, this might seem like a big price tag, but it pales in comparison to their statement that the ISS cost a total of $150 billion to develop and build, with NASA making up the largest portion with contributions from Europe, Russia, Japan, and Canada. With the ISS's end of life nearing closer and within just a few years from now, NASA needs to make a big change to continue their research. NASA states that the following, the primary purpose of the Commercial LEO Destinations Project is to stimulate US private industry development of free-flying orbital destination capabilities and create a market environment in which those services are available to both government and private sector customers. Also, according to the CNBC article, NASA will save an approximate $1 billion per year in costs by having a commercial entity run the stations and offer it as a service to both civil and commercial customers. According to this article, in 1984, President Ronald Reagan directed NASA to build the International Space Station within the next 10 years. However, the first segment of the ISS wasn't launched until 1988 by Russia and closely followed by a US module the same year. Then in the year 2000, the first manned crew went up to the ISS. Since then, many modules have been added to the ISS and the station has continuously been used for innovative research in microgravity environments. Now, unfortunately, the ISS is planned for end of service by 2024, but is expected to be extended to 2028. With its end nearing, NASA is looking to save approximately $1 billion a year by leaning on more commercial partners, as well as to bolster the space industry for both commercial and civil use. So the Commercial LEO Destinations program was designed to do just that. Announced in March 2021, this two-stage program intends to give a financial push for multiple companies with different space station designs. And the first stage of this program was to award up to 400 million in total for up to four proposals. And just last week, three winners, so three of those proposals have been announced. Of course, before I announce the winners, I'm gonna need you to invest in that like button. You know, your homeboy here is on the grind and it really does help. Now to the winners of the Commercial Leo Destinations Program. We have NanoRax for 160 million, Blue Origin for 130 million, and Northrop Grumman for 125.6 million. Now let's take a deeper look at each company's partners and offerings to see how they compare. So 160 million goes to the NanoRax as the prime and is partnering with Voyager Space and Lockheed Martin. And their station is gonna be called the Star Lab and is planned for launch in 2027. The Star Lab will host a biology lab, plant habitation lab, physical science and materials research lab, and an open workbench area. To do this, the team is combining different expertise together. For instance, NanoRax brings commercial expertise already working with the ISS. Voyager Space provides sophisticated investment strategy, and Lockheed Martin brings engineering knowledge and strategic vision. Now on to the second winner. So we have 130 million going to Blue Origin who partnered with Sierra Space and is also teaming up with Boeing, Redwire Space, Genesis and Engineering, and Arizona State University. And their creation is called Orbital Reef. And now Orbital Reef is designed to be a human-centered space architecture which is advertised as a mixed-use space business park. So for their team, Blue Origin provides vehicle utility core systems and heavy lift via their new Glenn launch system. Sierra Space provides large integrated flexible environment or their life modules, as well as their Dream Chaser space plane. Now, Boeing provides science modules in their Starliner crew spacecraft whenever they fix all the bugs. Redwire Space provides deployable structures and microgravity research. Genesis Engineering Solutions provides single-person spacecraft, 
and Arizona State University, to top it all off, provides research advisory services. And to give them all props, the offering does actually look pretty cool. And moving now to the third winner, which is Northrop Grumman at 125.6 million, it is partnering with Dianetics, with other partners to be announced later, is creating a station with a modular design for commercial application and utilizes previous expertise built on the Cygnus spacecraft. And this station is going to have multiple docking ports, which will allow future expansion to support crew analog habitats, laboratories, crew airlocks, and facilities capable of artificial gravity, in support of multiple customers. Based on pictures alone, I don't think Northrop's offering is as visually appealing as the other ones. However, looks are an unfair way to properly evaluate their offering. So for now, we will sit tight until more is known on all three offerings in order to do a better comparison. Now with winners, there's always losers, and apparently NASA got a lot of proposals for this program. So we're going to go through just a couple of them to give you an idea of the other options that were available. So let's go ahead and dig in some of them. So we have other submissions like Think Orbital, which builds the module as a large sphere once up in space rather than being built on the ground. And we also have Axiom Space, who's been aiming for building a large commercial space station for a while now, and has recently won some work with the ISS already to kind of prove out that technology. Now what does this all mean? It means that things are moving towards the commercial sector for the space industry, which is great because before it used to only be for governments, and now it's for, for large companies. Now it's finally being moved to startups and the average person. Not just that, but there's a huge amount of cost savings for government entities that exist today. NASA last year estimated that the commercial crew program alone saved the agency between 20 and 30 billion dollars while funding development for two different spacecraft rather than just one. So the question that you actually care about, does this provide a good investing opportunity? And unfortunately, these wins won't really move the needle on the large companies, and the small companies are private, so we won't be able to invest in them and be able to make any money quickly. The only one that could possibly get some stock elevation might be Redwire Space, but it's an undisclosed amount of how much money they're actually bringing in from this deal. So for now, we're just gonna have to wait and see if there's any opportunities coming up after stage one, and hopefully in stage two, we'll see if there's something that we can pounce on. And if that happens, I'll definitely keep you up to date on all the things that go on. And for now, that is it for this week. If you haven't seen the analysis on Astra and Rocket Lab, I highly encourage you to do so. And if you like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Anyways, this is Seedling Space, signing out.